born. My dear Mr. Demos. You talked to him? Strong, no, not the kid. Oh. I haven't talked to the kid. Good. <clears throat> he wants to mow the lawn for no charge. Mm. He's, a, he's a Christian. Who? Neighbor kid. Oh, sure. I, I have to find out because every morning their car is gone. They go to church. People across the street, they go to church. I mean, that, not, no affiliation. So this kid is acting out his Christian beliefs. So I'm going to send him gift cards. <laughs> yeah. Who we call on the kid? I mean, he stuck one and one on the way. Oh, so okay, he's that's a, who you're calling again. Oh, wow. Well. He's Don't you married. Think he looks like him. He came to our house, and we didn't help get him get in the car. Oh, wow. I had never met him before. Wow. Oh. Now, which house is that? The little one by the shed. Oh, okay. Huh. Like across the shed, or just that little, that little one next to it. Next. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh nice. Well, yeah. It's... Yeah. They take down that school yet? <laughs> or is it just? What about the kids? No, no. The, the school in Philly. Oh, it's, oh, it's... Still up there? No, it's not. Wow. They don't use it anymore. Of course not. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. But taking it down costs money. Yeah. Yeah, just put a new lock on it. Put up a new window from time to time. Mm -hmm. Works just fine. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Eventually, it does get pretty pricey. There's a... There's an old prison in uh, about... 20, 30 miles south of us in Joliet. Mm -hmm. um, old prison built 1870 something. Big, beautiful place. Uh, and they closed it in like 2000 because people kept escaping because it was getting pretty old. Um, and it just sat empty for probably about 21 years now. And for about, I, I visited probably 2018 and there had been about 17 years of people breaking into the prison to take a look. And it was so easy to get in because they had cut, like they took a pair of bolt cutters and cut a person shaped hole in the fence. <laughs> or they took a bunch of duct tape and they just set the razor wire aside. So you could just yeah. literally breeze through into this compound and out of the compound. And you know, the big entrance areas you know, walls are like beaten in, graffiti's everywhere, and you can go out the back door into the into the prison itself, and it's a huge, big, beautiful place. Um, but 2019, 2018, uh, somebody set part of it on fire. Um, now it's almost always completely empty, but this wasn't the first time. And so, you know, Illinois State Police are like, well, what's going on, guys? What are you doing about this prison? And it's, you know, it costs millions and millions of dollars to take down. So they just put a 24-hour police van outside of it for a very long time. It might still be there. Um, which, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty expensive to me. <laughs> just to keep kicking well, that can down the road. stuff like that down is is expensive. Oh yeah. And then what do you do with all the stuff that you <clears throat> just like driving down a highway you see every once in a while you'll see a collection of used broken up concrete. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are they gonna do with it? You know, there has to be some some way of processing that so that uh, I would think it would be eventually reusable. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure in Chicago when they dig it up, they haul it away in dump trucks and they like grind it back up into stone again. The um, therapist was talking to you about when you were in Japan, and I was trying to remember, you told me once how you got the job uh, overseeing the warehouse, right? Is that what you did? Yeah. How'd you get that job? Well, I could <laughs> Well, yeah. Is that it? Wow. How come you could type? Well, I took typing into high school. But most people didn't? Well, yeah. That's a time. Yeah, boys. Boys didn't take uh, typing like women girls. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And I was, I, I don't want to say I was ever a good typer. Sure. But I was apparently the best when they took me. What happened? We were out to sea on the ship. The guy come around and wanted to know if anybody could talk. I remember there were six of us that said we could talk. And so they set up a deal and each one of us went in and typed uh, individually, and I never thought anything about it. And I don't remember. It was two, three days later, they come along and told me that I was going to. In the army, they have a thing called MOS. That's your service. That's the number you're assigned in the service that you're to do. Mm. My MOS, when I got on board the ship to go to Japan, was to run a BAR, if you know what that is. What's a BAR? That's a Browning Automatic Rifle. Oh. That's the force SOP that goes out in front and gets killed first. Mm -hmm. He's got that machine gun that you always see on TV mm -hmm. shooting everybody. But he's usually the guy that gets shot first because he's first. Mm -hmm. well, I had never even had a hold of one. But that was my assignment. I was to be to run a BAR. And so when I was on board ship, they changed my MOS to whatever it was, clerk typist or that's the term I'm going to use because I don't know what it was. And when I got to Yokohama, I was transferred to the 8th Army Signal Corps. And they had a warehouse in Yokohama that I don't know what else it had in, but it had, a, I want to say, a million camera parts. Oh, really? I remember, I remember seeing a bunch of little ball bearings, <laughs> and in the service they want you to count them one at a time. And, you know, uh, I supposedly had eight whack nurse, eight whack assistants, and uh, either twenty or twenty-eight Japanese girls helping run that warehouse. Holy cow! And of course, I wasn't there long enough to even know all of them. Mm. I met some of them, but I never, never got acquainted with them well. Yeah, how long were you out there? About three months. It, I was gone from the United States, I think, three months, something like that. Wow. Um, it's long enough ago, my, my uh, memory is less than accurate. And on the way there was a hurricane? So whatever you call or it. Or a typhoon. That would be because yeah. Pacific. Mm -hmm. 
right? Thai food. Yeah. It was so bad it blew us off course six days. Wow. It was actually worried about sinking the ship. We sat 33 feet above. We were just sitting still in the harbor. We sat 33 feet above the water line. And I was on deck when water come over the deck, when the sea waves come over. And after that, it got bad. <laughs> they lock all the hatches. Water can't get in, and it's just like a submarine, except you keep, and we'd go under, and we'd come out, and we'd go under, and we'd come out. That went on for about three days. You just can't imagine the, the noise or the smell. Oh. Can you imagine a thousand seasick sailors? Oh. Locked inside for three days. Yeah. Wow. Golly, did they did they try to feed you oh, I, while that was happening? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I supposedly there were six people that did not get seasick, and I was one of them. Wow. Six. I did not get seasick. Wow. And I went to Chow. <laughs> and to go to Chow, you had to have at least one arm firmly around a a pole vertical bar. You couldn't sit still. You couldn't hang on to your tree. You had a, it was a real chore to eat. They didn't give you like just a can of beans. Well, you just like, we'll pop it open and just pop it open. Stand about. But where's it going to be when you're trying to put the spoon in it? Oh, no, you just <laughs> hold You just like shovel it in your mouth with you gravity. <laughs> you know, I'll take some corn. Wow. <laughs> That was quite an experience. I'll bet. <laughs> wow. So okay. we were. It took 17 days to get from Seattle to Yokohama, and 11 days to get back. Wow. When I went back, it was just nice sail, almost all the way. Just, just a night boat ride. Nice boat ride. See, there's a nest over there, or they're building one or the other. Oh, they're building one. Well, it looks I like see it. Me. Little bits of mud on it. Yep. Yeah. Building one here, too. Huh. They must have a problem. See, if they don't want them on the sprinklers, they could put little platforms up and give them a place, but I guess then they probably poop. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, that's not too bad. You stick them over the rocks over there. I know. They're just fine. It just does not seem like we should fight them and work with them. Well, that's a shame. Oh. So why'd they, uh, why'd you only spend three months in, in Japan? Well, the main thing, my father had an accident with a tractor and because he was injured, they sent me home to help him farm. Hmm. To help them, I guess. There's a name for that, but I can't tell you what it was. Well, isn't that just honorable discharge? Oh, yeah, I got an honorable. Then I, I spent six years in the Army Reserve. And ah. I had a discipline. A, an honorable discharge. She knows where it is, and I got it. You've got it some, some somewheres about? Some pile of papers. Wow. Well, what are you doing in the reserves? I've, I've met a couple people Absolutely in it. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Is it just, like just in case? You train? No, we did not train. I. There is active reserves and they keep you busy doing that stuff. Beautiful place to set, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> did not, uh, I got trench. We didn't have a an active reserve system within everything. When the government, you may or may not know this, when the government, everything is according to this rule or that rule, and we did not have a an 
an active reserve system within the specified miles of where I was living. Sure. So that's why I was in the un... What, there's a name for it. Reserve. Inactive. Inactive reserves. Anyway, that was... <laughs> so is are you just supposed to stay in for six years or did you leave for some reason no I didn't. six years was a term all right and of course I, like I said I didn't do anything and at the end of six years in the mail here here come a piece of paper <laughs> wow why um you didn't get drafted into the army did you? no I wasn't just uh, to help with, uh, it was the aftermath of World War II, right? Yeah, that was. It was just right after, just before Korea. Well, Korea started six days after I got home. Six days after you got home. Whoa, wow. Missed that. Wow, that's, that's three proverbial bullets now? Mm -hmm. That you dodged? Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Proverbial bullets? You didn't actually end up dodging bullets. <laughs> I mean, good grief. Yep. Wow. Yeah, we're on a call or on somehow. A call. Yeah. yeah. The, thing, the one other thing I always think of when we talk about Japan, I was, you read about World War II history now, MacArthur is a World War II history, but the hero, mm -hmm. I, have, I have never been a fan of his, always that he did wrong things that cost the United States men's lives. But at the end of the war, when the Japanese surrendered, he wanted the United States the government to send missionaries to Japan. Hmm. And of course that didn't happen. And think how that would have changed. The Japanese culture is very... Uh, They mind. Does that mm. make sense to you? Tojo said, no breakfast this week, there's no breakfast this week. Sure. They were very de dedicated to their belief, their, which was sort of a religious belief, but if we could have changed that, we'd have a huge Christian outreach that is not, not there now. Mm we're still trying to accomplish. Yeah. So I suppose MacArthur had lots of brains and I just <laughs> didn't want to acknowledge. <clears throat> and the other thing, <laughs> his wife had built a, what do we call that? General headquarters. Uh, uh, an embassy? No, a place for enlisted men to go have a good time. Oh. In Tokyo. And it was a, a very, it was plush for that period of time. Mm. I got to go there. No kidding. Yeah, I, I've had experiences. It's a, I went there with a, a, an extrovert friend I'd made from Boston, Massachusetts, John Sylvester Lund III. <laughs> and so we went in there, and on the third floor, they had a place where you played cards. And, 
shot craps and gambled. Wow. Casino, whatever. Yeah. It was not a it was not a company run casino. If you got a half a dozen guys together and sat down at the table and played poker, that was just everything was individual like that. Sure. So we did that and I had never played anything but penny any poker in my life and don't know much about it really. Just kind of knew the news. And old Johnny kept drinking, kept drinking, and he had a bank fistful of money <laughs> in the bank roll. And so we started playing poker. <laughs> and he was losing money hand over fist, and I was winning money hand over fist. <laughs> Not because I knew how to play, but because the good Lord allowed it. Mm -hmm. And when we got all done, I had to, uh, I had enough winnings to cover his, he had bankrolled the game. Oh, sure. Well, I'm talking about hundreds of thousand bucks. Wow. That's a lot of money for a service man who makes 20 bucks a month. Yeah, thousand bucks, wow. Where did he get that money? I don't know. Good grief. He'd been there for years. Oh. And hmm. I, of course I was the, yeah. but that's just one of the things that happened. The other thing that happened that, that night, that it was two o'clock in the morning when we got done, and of course, our crew, I was supposed to be back in the barracks in bed at midnight in Yokohama, which was 30 miles away, and <clears throat> they shut transportation down at, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. How am I going to get home? Oh, well, that's simple. He called up a motor pool and ordered a taxi. <laughs> they sent a taxi out and we rode back in a taxi. I never heard a word about it. <laughs> just, I've had experiences like that or just to make me smile inside and know that the Lord has been twisting somebody's arm a time or two. That's really sweet. Do you know what uh, happened? What was his name? Douglas? What was I don't know that the, the, Boston the third. fella? Boston. Yeah, the third. Do you know what happened to him? Who? The guy from Boston, the extrovert. No, no. I never, I never stayed in touch with him. Uh, he and there was another man from Arkansas that I often regretted that I didn't stay in touch with. Hmm. What was his name again? John Sylvester Lund the Third. Lund. L U N D. So I'm sure we can find them. He always so. said his middle name. So well, sir. Was his middle name. Yeah, you can but find he, probably find their stuff in the census data. That he was, that's who he was. I don't know how many John Sylvester Lund the thirds there are in Boston. <laughs> There's probably up to two. One of them is the he second. Can, you know, his he had some history and all that, but. At that age, I wasn't interested in that stuff at all. He had some history? Well, yeah. People coming over on the, from England or wherever. Oh, sure. Well, yeah, you're second generation immigrant in some I, sense. Yeah, I can't tell you what, what he was now, but I just remember the, the character and the name. He was built like Floyd Richards and, and about the same personality. Very loud. He knew whether he knew or not. <laughs> yeah, I know those folks. They're fun to party with. Yeah. <laughs> they are a good time. Yeah, that's exactly what he was. <laughs> the, other, the other guy from Arkansas was just the opposite. He was a serious as anybody ever was born. Wow. He didn't have a high school education, but he was one of the brighter people I ever met. He, he could sit down and draw you a house two before at a time. Wow. Hmm. wow. Self-taught wow. architect.
That's amazing. That kind of that reminds me of a story Brian tells us every once in a while of a friend of his from seminary who became a uh, a youth pastor in Montana, just deep Montana. You know, it was he he comes in and you know through the winters, through the springs, through the summers, he realized if you need a plumber, there's no plumber in the yellow pages. If you need a mechanic, there's no mechanic in the yellow pages. If something breaks down, you go knock on a door or, or you, you, you ring up a friend yeah. and then they'll just come over and fix it because everyone's built their own house. Everyone's done their own plumbing. Everyone's keeping their own car. And I think that's really interesting because, you know, you just... Yeah. You pay each other in pies kind of deal. <laughs> and uh, he <laughs> he mentioned to Brian one time, he's like, yeah, those, those kids aren't the most progressive kids and they're kind of quiet and they're kind of closeted, but man, what they could do on horseback. <laughs> Holy cow, what they could do on horseback. And I, yeah. You ever have horses? Well, I... <laughs> I didn't do a good job of staying on the back. <laughs> well, fair enough. Is that how you got kicked by one? You got kicked by a horse, didn't you? Cow. That was a cow. That was a cow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lisa had a, we had a pony for Lisa. Yeah. You got Lisa a pony? Lisa had a Shetland. Uh, wow. Yeah, we had a. And she couldn't ride it, and Alan would have to ride that thing to wear it out enough so that Lisa could ride it. <laughs> anyway, just because I had another horse. I don't know. He got people off. Right. Well, a little. We had a full size horse that she insisted on feeding too much. Hmm. And they always had their hooves grow too much. Hmm. And then I'd have to trim hooves. I, I didn't know what I was doing and wasn't good at it. Didn't like it. <laughs> I finally gave, gave him away. Sure. Somebody else's problem. Yeah. Well, the, pre <laughs> the people that got him were horse people. Ah, sure. Golly, that's something. I went to grade school in Vesta. I had a neighbor who lived a mile and a half west that rode a pony to work that some of the time. And that pony was, uh, my goodness, we got thrown off of that pony more times than we got to school on it. It was a real problem. Wow. And you went on the pony yourself or no 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 it was his pony sometimes i'd ride with him and, but he was always getting thrown off and we'd have to go hunt the pony and <laughs> then you gotta catch him and so forth and then <laughs> then his dad got him a mule to ride a mule a mule when that thing was was so skinny you could hardly stand to straddle its backbone. Oh, wow. Old punk. It never showed anybody else. Well, I'll bet not. They just didn't feed it enough? I think it was that old. Oh, wow. Sure. Hmm. You walked to school? Yeah. How long of a walk was that? Well, about a mile. Oh, yeah. About a mile. Yeah, I did we, too. <laughs> we lived yeah. on a, it's a half mile line and you walk another half mile and then you walk another. I can't ever remember my folks taking me, but there had to be some horrible days and we walked anyway. I mean, I don't remember that. 
Well, would you just not go to school on a blizzard day? No, we never miss school. Hmm. Wow. Dad always took us to church, no doubt about it. But I don't remember what happened in school. <laughs> Yeah, my dad only went to the fourth grade. Then he, oh, wow. Then he had the farm. Uh, and his dad was a drinker. Hmm. So my dad was the oldest. And the only thing he knew was work. Hmm. And my mother that way, too, just work. Hmm. Well, it keeps people fed. Yeah. But it's not very good for the intellectual part. I mean, look what you know now. Oh my gosh, it's interesting to listen to him. <laughs> he can talk about what's going on in the world right now and make sense. You know, we get a little bit <laughs> on the news. Well, the riots are doing this, but you explain why there are riots. You know, very interesting. Things are moving too fast and others aren't moving fast enough. And people are annoyed by how slow some things are moving. But the reverse of that is you have a very difficult time making a living farming the mm -hmm. first year or two. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. It would be like talking about that Montana deal. It's, uh, it's probably very true. Everybody knows how to build their own house and mm -hmm. how to keep the wind out. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows everybody. And oh, yeah. So average competence might be pretty high and gets better and better as a specialist comes in and makes you feel foolish and <laughs> teaches. teaches you how to do it. Yeah, nowadays the knowledge that you have now it's moving fast. We're way behind. We, we can't keep up. Dad, your parents went to college, right? Huh? Your your adopted parents went to college, right? I don't remember. Mother, what... My mother, yes. He, Dad, I, I don't know. He had one or two years. Bethany and Lincoln. Yeah. It used to be a Christian college. That's where they met, and that's where they went to school. Yeah, that's a little unusual for the time, I would think. Yeah, it was. And how did he get there from that far in Kansas? Yeah. I do not know. He had a, his next oldest sibling is a brother who became a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Oh! And I think that he was the one that started going to the Cotner College. Mm -hmm. How did he get there? Beats me. My, I know very, very little about the grandparents in Kansas. My grandparents. Yeah, the Peratts. I know that he, Grandpa Peratt, used to live I don't remember the name of the town now in Oklahoma, but it was far enough south they raised cotton. Mm. Wow. And then he moved to Enid, Oklahoma, and owned a hardware store. And then they moved to that place in Kansas, and I think he had 300 acres there. And I told you how rocky it was. Yeah. Yeah, just rock. And, uh, how did it all happen? Don't know. I know his, I know grandma's parents settled in that part of Kansas to begin with. The Muckus? In the uh, straw in Kansas, Burlington, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Burlington's a town about like Tecumseh. Anyway, he supposedly was, whether they were on a horseback or a discovered wagon or something, when they got to that area and saw how big the 
sunflowers was. He says, if it'll grow sunflowers like that, it'll grow corn and that's where it stays. <laughs> and that was along that Eagle Creek, the Yosho River. The Yosho River is the name of the river that they dammed up. And uh, anyway, he had some very good farm ground in there. The rest of that's mostly just coal flint hills, rocks. Mm -hmm. I was telling Laura that I remember as a child down there in Kansas, they used to have a family reunion every year or two, and they, a bunch of people got there like dad's brothers and sisters. They went down to Eagle Creek, they drove the car into the creek and watched it and drove it out. Oh! <laughs> it's that rock. That's rock. Yeah, wow. That's a good way to wash a car. Yeah. If the car will take yeah, it. You just, <laughs> they just took a bucket of water and throw it on your car. You know, I it's, still remember that. It's just fine. Wow. And that Neosho River, they dammed it up and took away, you know, what's one of those thousands of acres mm -hmm. deals. This town of Strawn that used to be there is all underwater and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, remember that. I remember the town of Strawn had a couple churches and a bar and probably a service station, I don't know. I know it had a bar because I had an aunt to run a bar there. Wow. Is that Bernice? Hmm? Bernice? Bernice. 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 Now they forget that. I remember her. Oh, you do? Oh, I remember Bernice, yeah. She was pretty loud. Yeah. Yeah, she's a character. Yeah. Absolutely that. Yeah, this memory. Good. Yeah. It was really something. Mm hmm well, that's just old stuff. They ask me what I had for dinner, I have some problems. <laughs> what did you have for dinner? Fried chicken. Oh, Ooh. do you like that? Well, they, had, they actually had good fried chicken this year. <laughs> I have been disappointed more than once when you, I don't order fried chicken when I'm out. Mm. Sure. Lima beans. Lima beans? I love them. <laughs> Lima beans and fried chicken. Yeah. Did you eat the beans? Oh, yes. You ate all the beans. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the lady eats with like the lima beans, too. They must have been pretty well done. Yeah, she had a hip poker. Yep. Wow. Oh, nice lady. Yeah, how was lunch? Good. Gee, oh, yeah, well. No, I didn't, didn't eat here. Mm -mm. Mine was old. I sat with him. I, should, I usually eat a sandwich half that size. Yeah. So it took me half an hour. <laughs> Fair enough. So when do they say you can head back home? Have to be able to do this and that. I could <coughs> could be living there now. It'd be quite a little more work than she needs, but sure. I could. I will have to be able to walk better and to work. They haven't released him to walk with, alone. And that seems to be a big milestone. Yeah. PT has to do that. Has to say, okay, you're good. So. Makes sense. You have him at home. How do you get him from here to the bathroom? Well, right. He, he, then he can get up. He's willing to use the walker, so. Something I was going to ask you. When we bought that recliner that's in the living room, when we bought it, did you take the back off? Oh, sure you can. You can. See? Okay. That would reduce it down if we wanted to take it to, uh, uh. Yeah, go ask them if they'll take it. Mm -hmm. They will. You can take it apart. Then as much as your load move around them. Oh yeah, we could call and ask if they'll take it. That's a good idea. That's a 
Yeah, right. Mm hmm I think you'll like the new chair. It has heat. It's what? It has heat. It heats up. Yeah, <laughs> the wrong season for that. Up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, makes makes you feel uh I don't know what. Warm? <laughs> no. <laughs> See how he's just, yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always yeah. cold. Yep. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah, That's I why like I thought it. that'd be a good thing to have in that chair. A little heat. See what they got on me for socks? What? They've got uh, sticky socks. What? Those are sticky socks. Oh yeah, and then no, I'm talking about those others are for swelling. Oh really? The swelling hasn't gone down too much yet. Mm -hmm. No. Well, your your legs, your bones my are. Feet and so, all our legs are swollen. Hmm. Yeah, why? Are they green? No. Because uh, I broke my toe a few weeks ago, and my whole foot swole up turned green and that's lymph fluid you can see the lymph fluid go back up my leg into my arteries because the bone what what they do about that oh they just i mean it's just the tip of my toe so it doesn't yeah. bear weight yeah, so that happened to old people they get all too excited because i want to know about the green part your own toenails mm -hmm. you might you know, my Nick something. Sure. Oh, what did you say? The green part. What? So the green bit is lymph node fluid, which is part of what helps you heal. So that green part is just this fluid all coming in and then coming back out, which is why they want you to ice so it. it. Was not an infection. No, no, it wasn't like gangrenous or something. No, it, that's a different green. No, it's a different green. But <laughs> like it was, it was visibly green under the skin. And it comes back out, and that's why they ask you to ice it, because it constricts all your blood vessels, makes them shrink, and it forces it back up. Well, this is, I haven't had any ice on these, but both legs and both feet are swollen. Well, I, am, I imagine a full leg ice bath would be very painful. Dude. Particularly when you're cold. I, uh, oh, man. Cold weather, anyway. Yeah. First week, I, uh, I broke my toes. I just submerged my foot in ice cold water with like cubes floating around in it and I had to do it for 10 minutes oh it was awful oh my word it was it was remarkably painful yeah no so I don't really recommend doing that with both of your legs no <laughs> catch pneumonia pretty quick yeah <laughs> so he's wearing two different shoes yeah because my toes broke. This one doesn't bend. Yeah. This one does. So I think you've told me this story before, but I'm. Your toe is still healing. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's got about three more weeks. It's broken in three places. Yeah. How did you do that? Dropped a plate of steel right on it. <laughs> oh my. Just right there. Bounced. Uh, but it was only the one toe. And I thought it was okay until it swole up and got numb. Yeah, he, call, he, he called me. He's in the garage. I'm in the house. He calls me. Mom, <laughs> I need you to come out with with some stuff. With some ice. And some ice and some bandages. I'm like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, but see, they have their garage in a gym. It's a gym. Yeah, it's garage gym. gym. Now. It works out. Yeah, me, Caden, Xander, sometimes ZJ. Well, ZJ, sometimes Xander. Uh, we work out in the garage now. Because of COVID, you shouldn't really go to a gym. So we just built one in the garage that we've been using for some time. It's nice. I like it a lot. What kind of equipment did you have to buy? Well. Whatever he yeah. fed. So... <laughs> You need a big old barbell, you know, the thing people use bench press. If you saw it, you'd understand, you'd, yeah, that's a barbell. Big plates, metal plates, 25, 45, 15, uh, 10 pounds each. You stack them up. I think the Rothers have this set up. 
um, a rack for putting the, the uh, barbell on so it doesn't crush you because yeah that is that is a way some people die in the gym that you bench press alone and then you get tired or you pass out then the weight comes right down on your neck and you die mm -hmm. um, which is why you're not supposed to do it alone mm -hmm. um, then a bar sticking up against the wall for doing pull-ups a few more uh, dumbbells for different exercises and yeah yeah it's a, it's a good time Caden wants to get a, a rather svelte built physique for <laughs> Broadway and you got to be like very lean very strong very slender and very flexible to be on Broadway so you have to have all all of those and it's very hard to be all of those because I have friends that are very muscular but can't touch their back <laughs> Right, where Caden can like grab his own hands. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just, just, just both ways. He can grab, up. shake hands. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't mind me asking, I remember you telling me the story, but I don't remember the details. Um, how'd you meet God? What? How did you meet God? Like, when'd you, when'd you become a Christian? Late 16 or 17. Just the road from where Lisa lives to becomes a used to be a gravel road. It had about every mile it had a turn, sharp turn. It's a gravel road. Uh, Today we'd probably call it minimum maintenance. Uh, just one particular when they blacktopped it, boy, they put some of the hills in the valley too, so it's not as hilly as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So one of these hills was rather sharp, sharp enough that. 50 or 60 miles an hour, you're driving along and your front end, it, it, you'd swear it dropped and, it, and there was a washboard there. You know what a washboard is? No. No. Well, you know what a washboard is? Your wash clothes? Oh. Yeah, I, do, yeah. Well, I know what that is. You got the same thing on a gravel road, except it's so hard. That you can drive on it. That your wheels are so well like that. Ah. Why do they put that there? Well, that devolves after rains and minimum maintenance on that type of road. Hmm. It's like it's a happened. wear pattern. Oh. What do you call sure. it? A wear pattern. Like yeah. it wears in that. Yeah. The, yeah, the way the road erodes. Mm hmm. Back in those days, they, uh, I drove a car that uh, probably wouldn't pass inspection today. I think. <laughs> you could bump the driver's door from the inside and it'd come open. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's, no, that's, no. <laughs> so I'm driving along and I get to this sharp place and at the bottom of the hill sits a car with a big red stoplight going blinking. And I'm talking about that light was the size of a, a normal headlight. Sure. Okay. So it started me and I hit the door and my, I went out the door and come over caught my foot under the Break, couldn't get, you know. So I'm getting drug along the highway, and the car's going this way. And I get my foot loose, and then it, the back wheels of the car run across here, 
April. Sometime in that time of going under and the other thing I remember is my head hitting the frame of the car bouncing off Ooh. the highway. Oh, that hurt. Anyway, in that period of time, I stood before the judgment seat and uh, asked the Lord if I could check on my sister who was a passenger in the car. Hmm. And th there were two of them. I've never... Two of what? Any, two holy people. Okay. And they, well, yes, I could do that. So when I found my sister, she was sitting in the car untouched and unhurt, just a fine shape. And somebody took me home, and I remember it was so difficult to breathe. I never did go to a doctor, but I finally lived through that night and the, the next day, and the, here I am. Yeah. And of course, that's a that's how I met the Lord. That's, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. But he decided to let me hear for some more time. Sure. So would that be bullet number one you yeah. dodged? Well, I can't think of any other. <laughs> Anyway, it changed my personality and the people I associated with. And after I met her, it, uh, I had never met a girl that knew the Bible and knew what she knew. I never really, I'd gone with lots of girls that went to the same church and all that, be Christian, but she was a practicing Christian, mm -hmm. I guess is the word. I never got over it. Well. No, you haven't. <laughs> it's for the best, well, too. I call, what you call them? And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> I like that movie. I'll, or to go. I watched that movie so many times, <laughs> we'll watch it again. That's a, uh, to me, that's an unusual movie. It's a, Porn and that is not very, not very well. They're not advertising porn. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, the preachers are starting to preach about this time not being a good time. I mean, the people are falling away. I, they've been preaching that my whole life. Huh? My whole life they've been preaching that. Been preaching what? That, that that it's the bad time and people are falling away. Yeah. Well. Well, it's still, we're still in that. <laughs> yeah. In Revelation. Yeah. I don't remember my pre preachers. I listened to talk about Revelation. Oh man, don't you remember when I was young and they had the movie series, left the Left Behind series. And, talking about the rapture and the end times and we're at the end of the world and the antichrist is among us and i mean ever since i was a child oh yeah oh goodness yeah we at the we at the marshall house had one of those classic political scares where you know somebody rather clever went through the qualifications of the antichrist and i believe revelation and they're like well this certainly looks like donald trump because of this reason and that reason if you talk about this like the several towers and the you know international acclaim and talking to people and then we send it over to brian and brian's like yeah sorry guys it's not him <laughs> If you just look at the context in a couple of the verses, like, yeah, there's some similarity, but it really doesn't, it doesn't actually make sense. It's forced perspective. Mm. What like, would Marshall House think of Trump? Oh, we're not too fond of him. He's not exactly a 
the kind of person dad would be thrilled with. You know, he's a serial entrepreneur, but more in the more in the vein of what he really is, which is a reality TV star, yeah. which he's very good at. Yeah. Like, you gotta <laughs> credit where credit's due. He's very good at creating reality TV. And I couldn't take my eyes away for four years. Mm -hmm. The nation. The nations of the world. Um, but it was like, yeah, kind of guy that many, many marriages yeah. doesn't really seem to be any kind of practicing Christian. It's like, that's not, yeah. even even for dad, it was like, nah, it's, it's not great. But he did hold an interesting mirror up to what the United States is, could be, and hasn't been, mm -hmm. which is never really a problem to do. The leader's a reflection of the people, at least in a democracy. <laughs> Or a really a republic. Are we trying to get back to Philly for the two o'clock? So what do you think? Here's my plan, because I coordinated with Brian on this. Mm. I'm happy to drive you guys home. And then I if it's alright, I'm gonna drive over to Brian's and finish my work day there. Okay. So I can be on the phone in either the in the car. Or at Brian's house, he'll probably well, you be won't on the phone make it. There. It's twenty minutes to two. Oh, it's twenty minutes. To, then I then if it's okay, I have my own headset. I can do that. I can talk with folks on the phone. Yeah. And I'm happy to work with you guys and make sure that's all spick and spam. I'm not mm -hmm. too worried about that. Okay. Well, I have to. We